how to use double and half angle identities. The double angle identities are really a special case of the sum identities. And then the half angle identities can be derived from the double angle identity. So this is really a progression in solving uh, trig functions for specific um, angles and we want a, a an exact answer not an approximation from our calculator so let's jump on in okay so perhaps you remember that the sine of a plus b is sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b uh, but if both of a and b are a then it just ends up being sine a cosine a plus sine a cosine a and so you got two of those so that's where this one comes from Perhaps you remember that cosine of a plus b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. But if, if both of the arguments are not a and b, they're both a, then you would end up with cosine a cosine a minus sine a sine a. And so that's just cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Now, what you remember from your Pythagorean identities um, remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. That means I could say that the cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. Um, and I could say that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. That means I can rewrite this in a couple of different forms. So if I replace the sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, you would end up with 2 cosine squared a minus 1. And if I replace cosine squared of A with 1 minus sine squared of A, you would get 1 minus sine squared of A minus sine squared of A, or 1 minus 2 sine squared of A. Those are important later on, okay? Um, and then your tangent of 2A, again, um, remember if you had tangent of A plus B, you had tangent of a plus tangent of b. If you replace those all with a's instead of a and b, you'd have tangent a plus tangent a, which would give you two tangent of a, and one minus tangent a times tangent a, which would be one minus tangent squared of a. Okay, so that's where those double angle identities come from. They're just um, rewritten with two of the same variable instead of an a and a b. Now your half angle identities, they get derived from the double angle identities. So if I'm thinking about solving for sine squared of A here, I could subtract a one from the other side and then divide through by a negative two and you'd end up with this identity right here. Sine squared of A is equal to one minus cosine of two A all over two. Now, what if I didn't want this to be A and this to be twice the amount, okay? What if I wanted this to be A? Okay, I would still have the relationship of a one to two ratio for these arguments. So if this is A, this would be A over two, all right? And so um, I could then rewrite this as this takes two steps in one, sine of a, or let's see, sine squared of a over two is one minus cosine a over two, and then I could take the square root of both sides to just get sine of a over two. Now, um, similarly, you could do the same thing with cosine squared. You would use this um, formula right here, okay? And you would be able to find that cosine of a over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of a over 2. Now, the plus or minus is going to come in. Uh, we're going to need to know where the angles are in order to apply the correct sign, S-I-G-N, of these half angle identities. And then the last thing, tangent of a over 2, you're going to use that quotient identity. Um, remember that tangent is the same as sine over cosine. And so we're going to just say, see the sine over the cosine here. And those denominators, since they're the same, are irrelevant. Okay. So we would end up with 1 minus cosine of a over 1 plus cosine. 
In the next video, we're going to actually utilize these identities. Here's where we derive them. Where did they come from? Next video, we'll actually use them. See you then.